is uh, Gaetan Borol. who will speak about topological recursion for Maser Beach volumes. So, thank you for the invitation. I'm very sorry I missed uh, uh, three quarters of the conference, but I was sick. But I'm very happy I could at least I could make it for the last one. And um, so, as Arnold would say, when you have a general theory, it should be supported by concrete examples. Um, so this talk will be based, will somehow be related to three talks that you already had, the one of Jan, the one of Alessandro, and the one of Sevra. And it's about concrete applications of the geometric recursion that we have so far. Also, we expect there is many more, as Jan advertised. So this is why, in fact, there's a lot of people involved. So more specifically, this is uh, seven group of authors. But the geometric recursion, it's something that I did with Anderson and Orantin. Um, and so we want to talk about major Ridge volumes. So one thing that topological, topological recursion can do is compute volumes of moduli spaces, but in a very broad sense. So moduli spaces attached to surfaces. You want to count surfaces. Um, so more specifically, what you want to do with Maser-Vich volumes is you're, in, you're going to look at the Teichmuller space of a surface of genus G with N punctured. And you want to look at the bundle of meromorphic quadratic differentials. which have as only singularities simple poles at the punctures. So this is like the cotangent space of the Teichmuller space. Um, so here, whenever you have a quadratic differential, you can look at the area. And if I fix the area to be 1, then I would have Q1 TGN. So in the early 80s, Maser and independently Veach showed that this space has a piecewise linear integral structure, which means you have integer points and you know how to rescale. So you can define an analog of a Lubbock measure. Um, so I can even be more precise. If you go so from that space, you can consider the horizontal and vertical foliations of that thing. So you would go to the space, so perhaps instead of GN, I write sigma for a punctured surface. Um, and you go to the space of measured foliations. So and that's just the horizontal and the vertical foliation of Q. And if you remove some small sets, um, in fact, so here, inside there, you have integer points, which are represented by multi-curves. Right. It just means that you have here some quantized periods. So you can pull that back if you did some homeomorphism. And uh, that's how you get your piecewise linear integral structure here. It's equivalent to what Maser and Vich did. And this thing is mapping class group equivalent. So if you want to know what's the measure of a certain subset here, you're going to say, let's count the number of points in A which I write in this very colloquial way, that would mean integer points rescaled by 1 over k inside that space. So you just look at integer points of finer and finer meshes, and that should approximate what your volume is. So it's really the analog of a Lebesgue measure. You divide, you need to divide by the dimension, which is 6g minus 6 plus 2, and take the limit when the mesh goes to 0. So that's the way the major reach measure is defined here. Mm -hmm. 
And what they proved is that now you can look at the fundamental domain for the mapping class group. And if you look at Q1 MGN, perhaps I should write things better. I want a measure on Q1. So if I have a subset of Q1 up to some normalization, um, you want to look at the measure of the set of all um, quadratic differential of form TQ, where T belongs to 0, 1 half, and Q belongs to A. So you just look at the cone below Q, when you have something of area, I mean, 1 or 1 half, and you look at the measure of this, and that's defined a measure on this set here. And what they proved is that this measure for Q1 MGN is finite. So since you have a finite measure, you want to compute it. So this is a Mezervich volume. I will denote it MV GM. OK. So what I want to explain today is that there are actually many different ways to approach the, prob the problem of computing this measure. Um, this story fits in a much more general setting where instead of just looking at all quadratic differentials, so generally they have simple zeros, you can restrict to fix the multiplicity of some zeros. <coughs> so it's very non-generic, so you have strata, and they also have a, notion, a good notion of major reach volume, which is finite. You may want to study that. You can do the same with k differential instead of uh, quadratic differentials. And all strata have also a certain notion of volume, and which is finite. What I will say today so far only applies to this open stratum of quadratic differentials. Good. So the starting point is one can relate this to um, uh, another counting problem, which is counting multi curves with respect to length. So the way it works is that you have a map from here to here. And as we said here, this Mezervich measure, it's obtained by taking the analog of the Lebesgue measure here, which is called the Thurston measure. And so you just almost by definition, you send the Mezervich measure to the product of the Thurston measure here. There's a construction which is called the horocyclic foliation, which is a way to take a measured foliation and a point in a Teichmuller space attached to this punctured surface. So that's a hyperbolic, complete hyperbolic metric. And to that, you can keep the same measured foliation here, but you can define another one that depends in a very non trivial way in lambda and sigma. And this is called the horocyclic foliation. And strictly speaking, it's only defined, again, on some dense um, subset of MF, the maximal measured foliations, whose complement has measured 0. What Mirzahani, and actually it's also based on work of Bonao, so it's horocyclic foliation proved is that here you have natural measure. You have, again, the Thurston measure on this. And on Teichmuller space, you have the Weil-Peterson measure. And this is a measure preserving homeomorphism once you remove these sets of measure 0. So in other words, if you want to compute the Mezervich volume, what you have to do is to look at the Thurston measure of um, the unit ball inside there that depends on the hyperbolic metric. 
and you have to integrate that against the Val Peterson volume on the moduli space. But what is this by definition? This is asymptotics of counting multicurves. So this is the number of multicurves gamma whose length is smaller than some k divided by k 6g minus 6 plus 2n limit k goes to infinity. I just wrote the definition. In other words, what you want to do here is averages over the Val Peterson measure of um, asymptotics of what I would call the hyperbolic counting function. Meaning counting of multi curves. Good. So this is our starting point. We're going to express this quantity with many different perspectives. And at the end, it gives you an efficient way to actually compute, even study asymptotics if you really wanted, of this type of thing when the genus goes to infinity or the number of punctures goes to infinity. Uh, what is the length of multi curves? Sum of length of, Sum of, length of components. No. For me, that's, I would say that's a black box. I don't want to spend time defining that. Uh, however, I will take that as starting point. If you want my Mezovich volume, you can say I define it to be like that. And then uh, I'm going to express that in many different ways. And strictly speaking, there's some normalizations in the original definition of Mazur Vich. So Mazur Vich Gn would be this times a certain constant. And this constant is 2, 4 g minus 2 plus n. With just a normalization. Then there's a question of labeling the zeros or not. And there's 4 g minus 4 plus n zeros with multiplicity in a quadratic differential. And then there's some, uh, some e other extra normalization factor. So that's the dimension of this uh, Q1, uh, G, Q1 Gn to the factorial. OK. So the main tool to do this, it was a bit anticipated by Jan, is a geometric recursion that allows us, that gives us access to statistics of multi curves. So I'm going to review what I'm going to use of the geometric recursion. So, GR summary. So what you've seen in the previous days, so GR uh, try to attach to any surface which here is bordered, so it's a slight difference with here. So take stable bordered surfaces. And the goal of GR is to produce mapping class group invariance element of certain vector spaces. Which vector spaces you choose? You have different possibilities. That's what you call the target theory. And there are two target series which have appeared before, which I will use here, is going to be the space of measurable functions on the Teichmann space of this surface. So here I'm having hyperbolic structures which are not complete because I have boundaries. So I'm asking geodesic boundaries. And to insist I'm doing hyperbolic geometry, I write T hip. So if you have that, then you have something which I will call hyperbolic GR, which produce these things. And how they are produced is by summing always of excising pairs of pants, homotopy class of pairs of pants, 
I'm not going to write a definition. Just take it as a black box. So you get this omega sigma, which are functions on the Teichmuller sway, which are invariant under the mapping class group, so they descend to the moduli space. And once you integrate that against the Val Peterson measure on the moduli space with fixed boundary length, you obtain something I'm going to denote V omega Gn, depending only on the boundary length. And that seems satisfies topological recursion. And so this is computable by recursion on 2g minus 2 plus n. So that's one thing. But then I think it's Sevran, uh, yeah, that, pr that also talked about the combinatorial target theory. So you have this combinatorial Teichmuller space, which at the moduli space level is just the, the space of metric ribbon graphs. And you just look at marked metric ribbon graphs, and that's the corresponding Teichmuller space, the universal cover. And here you can also, so that's also a target theory, a different one. And so you produce by GR some functions or this combinatorial Teichmuller space, which are mapping class group invariants, so they descend to the moduli space. Um, so you can integrate. But here the natural measure to integrate, I mean, combinatorial geometry has its own way of taking a random combinatorial structure, it's this Konsevich measure. And you obtain, so maybe I don't distinguish, um, here I also denoted V omega Gn also a function of boundary length. And it's again given by topological recursion. And what's here is that, of course, uh, it's produced by recursion, so you need some input data, some initial data. So here's here, it's for uh, initial data, which are these A, B, C, D that you've probably seen several times. And here the same thing. In particular, A, B, C, their function on Teichmuller space of a pair of pent. But in both cases, this is nothing but. Uh, it's not easy to see that color. Okay. So, is it better? So the Teichmuller space, either hyperbolic or combinatorial for the pair of pants, is just r plus cube. So you get functions of three length. And out of that, you can generate these omegas. So what can you do with this? Meaning, which kind of function can you reach by this procedure? So there's two important examples. <coughs> so one is what I would call doing statistics of length of multicurves. For that, you take f, which is a test function, decaying fast enough, faster than any power law. And what you want to consider is the sum over all, so this is primitive multicurves, of product of all components of f of the length of that component. And here, Either you do it for a point in uh, for hyperbolic length, or you do it for combinatorial length. You choose. So once you have um, marked metric ribbon graph, any curve you can homotopy to the graph in a non-backtracking way. And then you just add up the, the, ed the length of the edges. 
So I will take this test function. I will assume that you have some initial data for geometric recursion that produce for you some omega sigma in either of these two cases. Then what I can also try to do is to say I want to do this statistic that biased by omega sigma minus the multi-curve. And this I will denote omega sigma f. It's either a function of sigma or g. So there are some conditions for what I'm going to write to be true, but the idea that you can take home is that if this thing satisfies geometric recursion in either of these versions, then omega sigma f also satisfies geometric, re geometric recursion, but for twisted initial data. So a f is still the all a. Bf, so it's a function of three length. So you take the function b that produces this omega, and you add to it a piece of a. My notations here meaning that b, you encounter it when you have something like that. when you move pairs of pens of this kind. And that's L1, L2. And this little L is the length on which you cut. So that's for B. And C, you take the old C, you take a piece of B, L, L prime F of L and C correspond to that situation. And then the surface is somewhere. That was B. That's C, so that's L1, L, L prime. But C has to be symmetric in these two variables in the axioms. So we need to symmetrize this. And you also need a piece of A. And there's something for D which I'm not going to say. So you have these quadratic transformations, which in fact, in the algebraic geometry world, are related to the given tile group action to the action of the R matrix. And when you twist, then you, you obtain these biased statistics. So that's the first thing you can do. If you have something that satisfies GR, you can define a new thing that satisfies GR, which you know what it is. This is statistics. That's one. But you need a starting point. What can you produce interesting for omega sigma itself? That's more like a group action. And it's where you have Mach chain type identities. So in a hyperbolic world, they were proved by Miyazahani. And in fact, that's one can think is the first history of the geometric recursion so in 2007. Uh, and it means basically that you can produce the constant function 1 as the result of hyperbolic geometric recursion for certain initial, for certain initial data. For some initial data which are explicit, but I'm not going to write. I think Jan probably just flashed it in his slides. If you want to do combinatorial target theory, 
uh, I think what Severin showed, uh, so these, uh, the seven, actually this is the six. One is also obtained so by so hyperbolic GR is what I will denote omega sigma k for another initial data, which is explicit and I'm not going to write, by combinatorial GR. So you have this sort of partitions of unity uh, to write the function 1 as a sum or homotopy class of pairs of pants. And these are extremely useful because of what I said here. If you integrate against Weil-Peterson, you know that you have something satisfying topological recursion so that you can compute it. So in particular from this, you get that the Weil-Peterson volumes satisfy topological recursion. If you integrate that, but now against the Konsevich measure, you get that the combinatorial volumes, which were studied by Witten's conjecture Konsevich theorem, um, also satisfy topological recursion. And this is essentially the Virasoro constrained part of Witten's conjecture. Except that now you have a totally geometric proof. You can also do the last thing, uh, which doesn't exist in the hyperbolic world, but does exist on the combinatorial world. Because you just need some, uh, once you have GR, you can choose what measure you want to integrate. The only thing that it needs to satisfy in order to deduce TR from GR is that the measure of integration is compatible with cutting and gluing. So the Konsevich measure is compatible because of the Volper type formula that I think Alessandro showed. But there's another way, which is discrete integration. On the combinatorial Teichmuller space, you can just look at ribbon graphs which have integer length. So you have discrete points, so you can just sum over these points. It's like counting ribbon graphs, and on each ribbon graph, you evaluate the GR function that you have. So you can do that. And here there's some conditions. This discrete measure only behaves well with respect to cutting and gluing if the initial data satisfies some constraints. It's not like here where you could choose any ABCD. So then you can do what I would denote N omega GN. And this is counting ribbon graphs. Sorry, right, some of the previous two uh, integrations, there are no conditions on ABCD. Here, there are only some decay conditions, right. anyway, for the thing to be well defined. Uh -huh. Here, it's more. There are also some support condition. Uh -huh. It's a function of three lengths, but it needs to be supported in a certain region of R plus cube. Is this what you were talking about last night? I don't think so. Okay. I could explain where it comes from, but uh, maybe after the talk. So here you have this map which is summing over MGN comb Z for integral length. And that's what I call N omega GN. And that also satisfies some discrete version of TR. Can I ask a question? Yes. It's because when we are uh, integrating over model spaces, Yes. They actually don't care that much about reductions. Which reduction you mean? Well Symplectic reduction? Yeah, ju just compactification of model space. You don't compactify here. Uh, it's a differential geometric thing. We're not doing algebraic geometry. We have measures, not cohomology classes, <laughs> and we integrate measures or volume forms if you want. Okay, but again, technically, it if you want to argue that's the psi class intersection on the dolin Mumford moduli space, you have to worry about compactification and how this compares. But if you just want to define these combinatorial volumes, 
by integration of that volume form that's totally well defined. That's what I mean, that for continuous case it's done matter because we integrate over